season of Easter. Season of uh, Easter isn't just one Sunday, it's actually uh, seven Sundays long. So why don't I say to you, Happy Easter. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to begin with just a few announcements uh, this morning. Um, and uh, being thankful, of course, uh, for the gift of holy baptism. And uh, so Case uh, James Knudsen will be brought uh, to the font by his uh, family, Andrea and Keith Knudsen, and their sponsors, Courtney and Colin Ferguson. And we celebrate with uh, the entire family uh, this day uh, as, uh, as Christ is brought into, as, as Case is brought into Christ's kingdom. Uh, congratulations uh, to you. Um, we also uh, uh, want to give thanks uh, uh, this morning uh, for our bulletin and radio broadcast sponsors, uh, Don and Sue Mork and their families uh, have given uh, our 830 broadcast and the bulletins that you uh, hold in your hand in memory of their parents. So uh, thank you for that memorial gift. As we uh, move into uh, uh, this uh, springtime, it's kind of the conclusion of a lot of things around the church. So next Sunday is actually the last day of Sunday school already. It seems like we just started, right, kids? Uh, Sunday school? No, 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 I'm not going to get out of the answer, but uh, Sunday is our last day of Sunday school, so our, our kids will be singing uh, again on Sunday, and then also uh, we celebrate, I believe we have 15 uh, fourth graders that will be receiving uh, Holy Communion for the first time, uh, First Communion next Sunday as well, so we celebrate with their families, I believe we have 15 uh, children from Grace, which is a large class, and then we have two from Providence that will celebrating on Providence Valley a little later in April, but we, uh, in, in May, I mean, we uh, certainly celebrate with those families. So, um, you remember it was a tough winter, right? Uh, our memories uh, are good about that, and it, it was been tough, just uh, our attendance at church has been down, and so uh, that makes an effect on our finances, too. So we're having what's called a Makeup Sunday, so you have an opportunity as we meet some of our financial goals. Um, I actually the opportunity to place makeup on the pastors that serve here. And I think I've decided to be on vacation that Sunday. So it'll be Pastor Matthew, right? Uh, but there's an envelope if you wish to help contribute. If a few men want us uh, been you know, stuck at home and uh, wish to help us out here, uh, Makeup Sunday envelopes. Uh, there are envelopes with monetary amounts uh, anywhere from a dollar to $250, you grab an envelope, stuff it, and then bring it back, and as we meet our, reach our goals, um, then we'll get the Mary Kay out the pastors, I guess, or the Revlon, or I don't know, I guess I don't know what other kind of makeup there is. What do you use? No! <laughs> Ordained minister 
of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And that you'll join with me in our prayer today. Let us pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears and the wounded hands of your risen Son. And by your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy. And strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you from the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the congregation may be seated as we uh, turn to our baptismal hymn, uh, singing together, Morning Cry, hymn number 732, found in our red and the four in the front. 732. And then as you bring case to receive the gift of baptism, you are instructed to be responsible. 
responsibilities uh, to live with case among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, and to place in His hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture Him in faith and prayer. And then, so that case may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ, your Word and need, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. So, you promise uh, to help Case James grow in the Christian faith and life of so and save me. And then Colin and Courtney, as Case's sponsors, then you promise to nurture him in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church of so and say we do. And then to the rest of Case's family and to the church I gather here today, the people of God. Do you promise to support Case James and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, then say together, we do. We do. <laughs> now I'll ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, then say together, we renounce them. We renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, then say, we renounce them. We renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, we renounce them. We renounce them. And do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. So it is right to give our thanks and praise. As we offer up what we call Noah's prayer, the blood prayer, we'll have the family and I'll put water in the baptismal font. So let us pray together. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life, in which you took the light, and through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and you raise us up to live in you. So pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that in case James who is now washed in these waters of holy baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever.
wants to represent the church to me? I know, it's so exciting to welcome. <laughs> it's so exciting to welcome a case into the body of Christ. Okay, just one at a time. And uh, just so we don't want to make a few nervous, right? There we go. Okay, very nice. And the sign of the cross. That's how we remember our baptisms, right? Okay, why don't you make the sign of the cross on your neighbor that's sitting next to you? Make the sign of the cross on their forehead. And so they can remember their baptism. Okay. Alright, we have some words of welcome uh, for a case that are printed in your in your bulletin. A, a baptismal promise to uh, the sponsors. And then also uh, words of welcome to Kay. So let's say that together uh, to the parents and the sponsors of our baptismal promise. We promise to give Keith and Andrea our support as they live with their child in the pathway of Christ. We offer ourselves also as ones who take Kate into our love, our prayers, and our daily lives, striving to build a community rich in the Spirit of God in words which to nurture Him. And we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. And we the blessing on this forehead and we'll bring him in the case around so the congregation can receive him.
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And a week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt it. But believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and who have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, that you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And you may be seated. Well, last week we reported the resurrection right on Easter Sunday, and I know many of you were in your own congregations and celebrated the resurrection of our Lord with your, with your family. And here uh, we reported the resurrection with a great uh, a brass ensemble, The, our, our Easter story, right? I'm surprised that no one brought their whistles back. To, you threw them away, I bet. Parents probably threw them away when they got, they got home. But we had, we had resurrection uh, whistles uh, last week. And, and, and here, uh, and as we read the gospel story, it is the evening of Easter, right? And Jesus shows, uh, shows up to his disciples. And if you pay close attention to kind of what uh, Jesus uh, says to his disciples, so that's what I just wanted to uh, maybe tap into your analytical eyes a little bit in John's account of uh, Jesus' resurrection appearance to his closest friends, to his disciples, and then and think about the implication of what Jesus uh, says to them. And so just ponder for a moment the first words that have arisen Jesus says to his disciples, Peace be with you. Peace be with you, right? When we say that in the Lutheran Church, the peace of the Lord be with you always, the response, and also with you. Now also with you, it just kind of comes naturally. Uh, but hearing these words, I think, of Jesus probably doesn't come naturally for us. His first words after his crucifixion and resurrection to his disciples is peace be with you. Give that dream a little thought this morning. And recall, just with me, the last time Jesus saw his disciples. The last time Jesus saw his closest disciples, they were failing him right and left in one way or another, right? These are the men who betrayed Jesus. These are the men that deny even knowing Jesus. These are the men that deserted Jesus, probably when Jesus needed them the most. They left him. They completely deserted him. And what are the first words that Jesus says when he sees his disciples? Peace be with you. You would think Jesus would say, shame on you, right? Shame on you for deserting me. Shame on you for leaving me. Have you not caught on to anything as I've been with you these last three years as you have walked with me in ministry? Have, have you seen God's kingdom coming? Shame on you for 
were not following me when I needed you the most. But that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says what? Jesus says, peace be with you. Words of love. Words of forgiveness. Peace be with you. Isn't that amazing? Can you think about that? That's the word of Christ to his disciples years ago, and it is the word of Christ for his disciples today. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Of course, the disciples were startled and, and they were terrified because they thought that they were seeing the ghost. You know, Jesus invites the disciples to, to touch him, to, to feel his flesh and, and his bones. He invites his closest disciples to see his scars, to, to, to look at the nail holes in his hands, and, and to see the, the hole in his side where the soldiers had pierced Jesus with a spear. Jesus kind of invited his disciples to, to believe that it was really him. But they were disbelieving and they were doubting that it, they thought it was just a ghost. And then we have Thomas. Who we know Thomas as what? Thomas is, we know Thomas as Doubting Thomas, right? I mean, that, that, he's, he's famous for that. He's famous for be, being the disciple that was the one who doubted Jesus. He's the one that disbelieved Jesus. This is a week later now, John tells us in the Gospel. This is a week later that, that Thomas shows up and, and he receives the report from the other ten disciples, but Thomas said, well, I'm not going to believe unless I see with my own eyes, right? And it's possible that you feel that way as well. It's possible that you sometimes have doubts about your faith. It's possible that you are not unlike Thomas, who has questions about the resurrection. You wonder about what this resurrected life of Jesus and the gift that he gives us this resurrected life, what this all means. And maybe sometimes you don't receive it full of faith, but maybe you receive it more with doubts and, and, and questions. Because I, I think our Eastern Sundays far too quickly turn into Easter Mondays, right? The great celebration of Easter where we have our resurrection whistles, where we have uh, the sanctuary full of lilies and flowers, and, and we have, you know, the organ open up and all the stops open, and we've got the brass ensemble, and the church is packed full of believers, right? I mean, it's easy to believe in the resurrection then, but then Monday rolls around, right? And we get back to our normal routine, we get back to our lives, we get back to our our Mondays, you know, those, those, those times that uh, we just kind of, uh, the resurrection feels a little farther away from us. And then sometimes those Mondays, they bring bad news for us as well. Maybe on Mondays is the day you get notice that you lost your job, or, or maybe it's Monday that you got that diagnosis, you know, with no cure. Or maybe another act of violence or terror on the news, which we don't have to wait for Mondays. Those happen on Easter Sunday, right? As it did in Sri Lanka. So we move from where it's easy to believe on Easter Sunday to the Mondays and the Tuesdays and the Wednesdays and the Thursdays of, of our lives, where the resurrection feels downright difficult to believe sometimes. And so Thomas, I think, gets it. Thomas gets it. Those other disciples are so hopeful in their Sunday belief, but Thomas kind of lives in the Mondays of the, of, of the week. He saw Jesus. He saw his friend betrayed by Judas hung on a cross. He, he saw Jesus killed in the cruelest of ways. He saw the nails pounded into Jesus' hands. He saw the wounds in Jesus' side. Even with whispers of the resurrection, the report of the res resurrection, the stories of the empty tomb, Thomas knows it may be too good to be true. The story that Jesus is now living. With all the bad news of the world, the resurrection 
sometimes seems too good to be true. It seems maybe just too impossible to believe in. Unless, unless you had some proof, right? Unless you're like Thomas who actually got to see Jesus walk through the doors. Thomas being able to see Jesus' scars on his hands and the wounds on his side. I mean, I mean we all kind of long for that, to kind of lift up and boost our faith, right? I mean, can you imagine what it would do to our faith to have Jesus just walk through the door this morning? The resurrected Jesus? What would that do to your doubts? What would that do for your faith? What would that do for your life? Christ tells Thomas to place his hands in his side and, 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 and to look at the scars, his very own scars. And there are times that we wish we could be Thomas, right? We wish we could see those things, that in the moments of our deepest distrust of hope, that Jesus would just walk right through our doors of the church or even the doors of our homes. That's what we wish, but that's not what we get. Instead, we have to learn how to believe without seeing. And that, of course, is faith. Believing without seeing. When the good news of the resurrection feels impossible, we have to believe without asking to see the scars. But you know, one of the truths of being human your truth and my truth is that we all have scars. We all have scars. Scars are the evidence of an injury, and scars are the evidence of the repair that our bodies have now gone through to take care of that injury, right? Some scars come with a story. Some scars come with a story of a car accident. Some scars come with a story of a surgery. Some scars come with a story of an ill-advised sledding adventure off the roof of your parents' house, right? I mean, all of our scars come with stories. But others just simply appear. Their story for God are never known in the first place. And underneath our skin rests another layer of scars, scars kept invisible to others, scars kept invisible to the world, painful twinges that won't allow you to forget what has happened, maybe the death of a loved one that stings long after the funeral. You carry that scar with you. Or maybe it's a fractured relationship with no clean resolution. You carry that scar with you, even though it isn't always visible to others around you. You still have that trauma. You have that scar that is sometimes unknown to others. But it's there. Scars that even if we wanted to give Thomas some tangible, overwhelming proof, only rely on your words for proof. Now this past year, millions of women asked us to believe in their scars, even if they couldn't prove it like you can prove a math equation that you do on a math book. This past year, millions of women through magazines and newspapers and, and everywhere on the internet, women and even some men, even some men shared stories of their scars, shared stories of assault, shared stories of their abuse and harassment in hopes that if enough people heard their story, if enough people heard the news about their scars, hopes that if enough people did the same, then someone might believe them. Someone might listen to the stories of their scars. So professors and journalists and housekeepers and engineers and office workers and friends and even retired
Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you with the Holy Spirit be honored. The glory forever. It was caused to pray together as one family. Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious on you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.